think I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. You're ready. We're live. <laughs> Are we live now? Oh no, yes. I'm making it too. God, I think I just turned up the light. Seriously, it's very bright. Just don't know what to do. It's raining out there. <laughs> raining out there, but the sun is shining on you with your light. The sun is always shining working with you, Kim. I don't think anybody believes that. <laughs> well, since you kicked your imposter syndrome into touch, Kim, I think, you know, I'm still working in my kitchen, but we, we've made we've made progress, haven't we, really? Yeah, we have. So the main reason – so we've got two reasons that we're – that we are – well, three reasons, really. We've got one reason is to talk about – What? <laughs> what? If you keep going, we'll have four. Look, we've got no, no, we've got three. The main reason is because we're British, we love to talk about the weather, and the weather where I am is awful. What's the weather like where you are, Kim? It's beautiful. It actually looks like a Simpson sky out there with like kind of drawn on clouds. You know, you can go off people. Yeah, you have to like them first. <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> I was only joking. <laughs> no, I'm really upset now. You've ruined my day. Oh, you no, know I need you not, really. Not really. The good news <laughs> is, is that, <laughs> the, so, okay, so there's the other two reasons that we're here is to talk about International Imposter Syndrome Awareness Day, which is tomorrow, just to remind everyone that that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. And also, um, the third reason that we're here is to actually talk about some kind of well, it was a bit of bad behaviour, really, on, on the part of one of our guests in the past few weeks. And and actually, he didn't really, he wasn't really very compassionate towards the audience. And um, the situation is that we've had some complaints about, uh, about this particular broadcast. Uh, so we need to address that as well. And I'll, I'll read that out. But I think, first of all, we've got to talk about the weather. So clearly, it's raining here, and I've got a bright light. So... I feel fine, but sunny where you are, isn't it? Yeah, but, you know, there's no positives. Without the rain, there can't be a rainbow. Exactly. So that's a very good point. Well, I thought I'd point. gone off you there, Kim, but, you know, See, you brought I'm it all back. <laughs> it's all about mindset. It's exhausting, isn't it? Exhausting. Not working with me. <laughs> No, where do I no, go no. for testimonials when I've got you, eh? <laughs> what? Did I write you a testimonial? Mm. I'm not sure I did, but I will sooner or later. Sooner or later, I'll write you one. So look, <laughs> um, Imposter Syndrome Awareness Day is happening tomorrow. Uh, lots of people are already getting involved with the conversation. We've got loads of events that are happening. And if you want to find out more information about that, you can go to overcomingimposter.com. And then you can get your seven-step guide as well, right, to overcoming imposter syndrome, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, research shows that actually one of the first steps to overcoming your imposter is actually to talk about it, which is one of the reasons why we've launched International Imposter Syndrome Awareness Day to try and create that safe space for people to be able to discuss it because it's fascinating in the last couple of weeks we've had a number of conversations where people didn't know what it was but when you start talking about it they're like oh that explains it that's either how I feel or that's how somebody in my team feels so what we wanted to be able to do with the Awareness Day was be able to provide some free support um, resources and also share some stories. So we've got some amazing people joining us for um, panel discussions, um, for sharing their stories. We've got a whole host of podcasts, interviews with people talking about their imposter and how they overcame it. And then obviously we've got the um, free download of the seven steps to overcome your imposter and turn your inner critic into your inner cheerleader, which is so nice when you can flip that switch. Well, I'm not really happy about having an inner cheerleader, but you know, we can kind of work on that yeah anyway so so when it when it comes when it comes to um the political correctness gone wrong that we that we actually are addressing here we had a we had a complaint uh, or two in fact um 
And it, we, we were talking about being bullied at work and, and one of our guests, he didn't quite really, he didn't actually show any compassion towards the situation at all. And I think at the time we should have probably muted him and say, and said, look, hold on a minute, this isn't quite right. Because um, basically, so one of the, one of the people who, who was watching said, I left the podcast because your guest was victim blaming. Of course, he is entitled to his point of view, but in my opinion, it's that kind of 1970s denial attitude which perpetuates the system, systemic corporate bullying. Your talk was about people inspiring confidence in others. I was just pointing out the flip side of that. Um, and it goes on. I, I, I basically apologise to the chap, um, and that's why we now have a disclaimer that, 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 that basically says that, you know, we will handle these things as best we can in the future, but also, you know, we're not to blame for our guests' um, archaic opinions, to be frank. Yeah, I guess the challenge that we've got is obviously, you know, people are entitled to, to their opinion. And I think it's okay for us to disagree, but not to disrespect. And I think we struggled somewhat in how to respectfully um, navigate that conversation. And it led us to a reflection of our reflections, um, which has then allowed us to say, well, actually, let's just be a bit more upfront about it because we can have different opinions and, and that's OK. But it's about how we respect each other. And I think one of the challenges that we've got is, is often when you're not in the situation, it can be easy to have an opinion of it. Um, you know, and we can say, well, you know, you shouldn't feel bullied because um, they can't bully you without your, uh, you know, without you letting them, which I think was broadly kind of the, the sentiment. And actually, you know, personally, I, I disagree. You know, how people make you feel is how people make you feel. I remember, as you know, when, when I had challenges with um, a stalker, one of their one of their issues was I've not done anything to scare you. But actually, you don't get to decide what scares me. I get to decide what scares me. And that's true of anybody who's feeling bullied. You don't get to decide whether or not they should feel bullied, they get to decide whether or not they feel bullied. And it's then a case of how do you create the right safe space for them to be able to talk about it and find a way through? Because it might not be the intention for them to feel bullied, but it might be the impact. And we talk a lot, don't we, about people's intentions versus their impact. Often what we're trying to do and what we actually do are misaligned. But if we're able to talk about it and create that safe space to talk about it, then we can start to break down some of these barriers that are creating workplaces that are toxic for, for the people. And we know that, you know, research shows that 57% of people leave their boss, not the organisation. So if we think about that, more than one in two people that leave, leave you. So that should give us all the kick that we need to go and do the work to help ourselves be better leaders and create that safe space for our people to talk to us. Yeah, I think very much so. And, you know, how this all, all connects together with overcoming imposter syndrome and the confidence spectrum that we are uh, putting together is, is fascinating, really, because confidence affects your behaviour. It affects your behaviour, it affects your competence, and those two elements, competence and, co and um, what am I saying, confidence, are, you know, con connected totally. Some people are delusionary. Some people do think that they could be a brain surgeon and walk straight into an operating theatre, whereas other people are more realistic about their abilities. And, you know, all of these things fit in, you know, imposter syndrome is on one side of the spectrum and you know, obviously, the other side of the confidence spectrum is the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is where people think that they're brain surgeons and they've never actually been in an operating theatre. Absolutely. And we all fit somewhere on, on that spectrum. And the beauty of the spectrum is that actually we can move. So we don't just stay in one place. And there might be certain situations where actually we go, oh, actually, I'm quite confident about this situation. But then we'll end up in a different situation and we'll go, I'm less confident here or actually... I don't feel like I fit here. And it's just recognizing where we where we are and understanding the language that we're using internally, because that's the thing that's driving us. We think that we do everything from our conscious thoughts, but it's our subconscious brain that's 
running the show. It's the thing that gets us moving. It's the thing that gets us um, thinking. It's the thing that brings us the information for our conscious brain to make the thoughts. So I think the more that we can talk about that, the more that we can understand it, and the more that we can help people identify what label am I using and how is it serving me, then actually we can start to change those labels and we change the label and we change our outcome. You're very much so. I find it absolutely fascinating how you can how you can have these deep rooted beliefs that are there from when you were very young and actually you can still be well allowing them control over your life. And those beliefs sit there in the back of our minds and and we don't do anything about it. And we 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 let our our brains subconsciously affect the outcome of our lives, right? And all it takes is that self-sabotaging belief to, to really damage your life. And eventually you might wake up one day and go, oh, I need to do something about this. And that is a magical moment when you become aware and actually you start re, re-implanting these beliefs. It's a fascinating, um, fascinating um, time in one's life, I think, really. Well, yeah, because we have these I am statements and we all have them. Um, and we create them, as you say, by the age of seven and we enforce them by the age of 14 and we pretty much embed them by the age of 21. And then for the rest of our lives, anything that happens to us that pulls back to one of those I am statements becomes like another leg on the table of that belief. And the, before long, we have the most stable table. But the beauty is that we live in a world of polarity. For every up, there's a down. For every left, there's a right. So whatever it is we believe about ourselves, the polar opposite is also available to us should we choose to and actually when we start to understand the i am statements and then we really start to dig into them we can say that these serving me is this is this how i want to think about myself do i want to be my own worst enemy or my own best friend because the only person that is with us constantly is ourselves so actually learning how to make yourself your own friend instead of your own enemy is such an amazing breakthrough. And having been my own enemy for 46 years before I really started to understand this, the change when you can become your own friend is immense. It doesn't mean to say that you don't still get things wrong. It doesn't mean to say you don't still hold yourself accountable for the mistakes that you make, but it means that you can actually treat yourself with the same compassion with which you treat anybody else that's external to you. Because that's one of the challenges, certainly one of the challenges I found um, with my imposter is most people that have met me think that I'm really kind and really considerate. And yet, if you had ever heard the language that I used on myself, you wouldn't want to spend any time with me at all. That person's evil. Um, And I would never use that on anybody else. I would never dream of being so hurtful to another human being. But I was that hurtful to myself. And I'm not alone in that. A lot of us are. And the challenge that you've got is the voice you use to yourself is so plausible. It's so realistic that you absolutely believe it to be true. And it doesn't matter what evidence there is or how many people tell you that the opposite is true. You just can't see it until you start to do the work. And I guess that's why we want to share this, because having now had that breakthrough and realized that actually I can change that outlook, I can change that view of the world. And more importantly for me, I realised that the voice we talk to ourselves becomes the voice we teach our children to talk to themselves. And that broke my heart. I don't want my little girl to ever talk to herself the way I talk to myself. And I don't get to just say, do as I say, not as I do. Kids learn by what we do, not just by what we say. And so if I want her to have a better internal voice, I need to find a better internal voice for myself. Very much so. And <clears throat> excuse me but I think also when when you notice other people doing it I mean we've all been in a meeting where someone might perhaps call themselves an idiot or they might they might say oh you're so silly and to, and say that to themselves right but actually it's 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 unconscious they don't even actually know that they're saying that to themselves but when you when you start studying this phenomenon and you and you understand confidence levels and you understand how they affect outcomes then you can you can notice these behaviors in other people and then you can pull them up on on those behaviors and that's what tomorrow is all about tomorrow is all about having some massive breakthroughs uh helping people to get over this and you know i i think it's it's a fascinating fascinating study i mean some of the people who we've interviewed in the past uh, past year 
have have suffered from this. I mean, you know, even Michael Tobin, OBE, suffered from this. He stood up. Uh, he actually was on a panel with Bill Gates, and he sat there, and he sort of. I think he he, he mentions it in the podcast that we did, and he just sort of looks over, and he's he looks over there, and he's and he's Bill Gates is over there, and he's like. I'm sitting on a panel with Bill Gates, right? Like, and I find I find that absolutely fascinating. How you know, even the most successful people that that we know. I mean, I reached out to uh, to Alistair Stewart, the newsreader in the UK. He he covered the Berlin Wall when I was a kid, right? And and I actually interviewed him last year with with Michael, and and that was that was really strange because. I was interviewing an icon, right? Like someone who 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 I had seen covering the Berlin Wall when it was knocked down, yeah. And and every every other news story throughout the what forty however many years of my life that I had television, right? When we had TV, there were like three channels, right? Two were black and white, and then there was a color one, right? Like that's how insane it is. But but I remember interviewing him and and actually thinking thinking back to uh, to that situation and and at that point I was like oh my god like he's like so like he's so famous like everybody knows who he is he's the, one of the most likable people on 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 the news right and and at that point my inner imposter kicked in but I didn't even know what that was because I hadn't begun researching it and it's only until we started talking about imposter syndrome. And then I thought back to those interviews, like I interviewed Stanley Tucci. And at the beginning, I didn't really know how famous he was. And then it kind of got a little bit further into the interview. And I was like, wow, like this guy's been in so many films, like it's it's crazy. And then and then at that point, my imposter syndrome, it, I didn't really I wouldn't say it was imposter syndrome. It was sort of more just a confidence thing. Like, wow, look, I'm talking to him and, and like, look, he's over there and, and I'm over here and. And, and, and it's just, it's a fascinating study. I think, you know, we've got people from Microsoft, we've got people from IBM tomorrow, we've got lots and lots of people, we've got Lisa Ventura, who, who's big in uh, cybersecurity, a lot of people she's interviewing as well. So I think we're starting the day quite early. It's gonna be a long, long day. So even people in America are gonna get their chance to kind of talk about it and share their, um, their experiences with it right but you know if you want to follow the hashtag it's actually iisad uh 2021 will be will be on the end of it for this year but you can also use iisad if you if you want to but it should be should be a lot of fun i think kim what do you think no i agree it should be it should be loads of fun and hopefully it will give people some insights and some useful and actionable advice that they can take to overcome their imposter so uh, hopefully people will will get involved and it will be useful i hope so i hope so so thank you for tuning in and um yeah let's uh, let's try and be uh, politically correct as we can and call people out on their uh, on their um bad attitudes i think is important too fabulous i look forward to seeing you tomorrow take care Thanks, me too. Bye.